Hello everyone. Hi. I'm Alessandro Voto, co-lead of the Institute for the Futures Blockchain Futures Lab. And I'm Sarah Skabersky. I'm a researcher on our 10-year forecast team and I also work on our Future of Work and Future of Learning initiatives. Today, we're excited to share with you a vision of the future. It's a vision of learning on the blockchain. But first, a bit about who we are. The Institute for the Future is a nonprofit think tank in Silicon Valley, founded in 1968. Our mission is to help leaders think systematically about the long-term future to make better decisions today. Our sponsors come from business, academia, government, and the public. And we explore a wide range of topics from the future of global work and learning to technology and well-being. One of the ways that we express our research, a lot of times we do research generally in 10 year timeframes, is actually through graphic maps that provide a visual overview and distillation of all of the hard research that we've done. Now the map on this slide is learning is earning in the national learning economy. We created the map based on research we did for the ACT Foundation, which is the foundation arm of the American Academic Testing Company. And the question we explored is, what are the main zones of innovation that we'll see in the next decade as the lines between working, learning, and living are blurred? And what we found was a radically different landscape and a new status quo. Now, while we don't have time to go through the full map today, I want to quickly walk you through three zones of innovation to give you a flavor of the big stories that are emerging in working and learning and peek at some of the companies who are leading this transformation today. Now, the first zone of innovation that I want to explore is that of continuous learning flows. Now, there's an increasing recognition that we learn everywhere, not just in the classroom, and learning happens throughout our lives. And We've known this for quite a long time, but there's been a recent explosion in the number of ways that we can learn. For example, we've seen apps like LRN, which you can see on the slide. LRN facilitates micro learning moments with mini quizzes and lessons to allow people to learn to code in small bites while they're on the go. And we're seeing people who are starting to track these new learning experiences in new ways as well. Take, for example, Degree. Degree considers every moment a learning moment, and they're working to track and capture the value of all of your informal digital learning. Now, how do they do that? Degree tracks your online activity to extract insights about your informal knowledge and then displays that in a personal profile. Where they're currently applying this is within companies as a new way to acknowledge alternative professional development strategies. So you can see how many articles that you or one of your colleagues has read online. You can count any video tutorials that you've taken for credit, and you can have any online classes, audiobooks, and you can even set goals for yourself and your team. And then with this insight into your colleagues' interests, strengths, and learning styles, you could tap into them for certain projects or even reward people with a promotion. Now, Degree recognizes and encourages people to constantly be learning, constantly be evolving. And that's really important, especially right now, because the technologies that we need to know and the skills that we're going to need are evolving even faster than official university curricula can keep up. And there's no end in sight. So it's these informal learning experiences, these online tutorials, learning games, collaboratives, hands-on projects, that may well be our go-to learning resources moving forward. Things like Degreed and the world of continuous learning flows have made way to a new type of reputation. One that isn't based on what school you went to or what major you had, but one that's far more granular and vivid, a dynamic reputation. On the learning side of things, we've seen this enabled by the emergence of micro-credentials, like Mozilla Open Badges, so Mozilla Open Badges has created a digital infrastructure for rewarding and tracking digital or real world experiences that generally take place outside of an official educational institution setting. So things like an internship, a volunteering position, or completion of a digital or community-based course. And dynamic reputations have actually also been showing up in the world of work. A lot of the change we've been seeing with work is actually driven by larger shifts. What we're seeing from people moving from a world of full-time employment to a lot more remote and task-based work. 
And one of the major platforms in this space is Upwork, which is the world's largest digital freelancing platform. What Upwork does is it allows anyone anywhere in the world to post a task online, something that can be done remotely, digitally. Then freelancers or Upworkers can respond and bid on a task. And tasks can be anything from building a website, writing an article, financial planning, or logo design. And the thing is, when you're hiring someone for a very specific task, there's generally a very specific skill that you're looking for, right? I mean, I don't want any old Spanish translator. I'm looking for someone who's able to do Mexican Spanish to American English medical translation. So what Upwork has created are hyper-specific skills tests where people can prove their skills in a particular area. And that becomes part of their profile, which also includes a portfolio of work from past projects and reviews from each of their past tasks. As opposed to degrees, these skills tests and works history give you a very specific view of what someone's capable of doing right now, what they're actually doing as opposed to a degree. And it constantly evolves as they gain more skills and experience. Actually, in a study done by Upwork of their users, they found that past performance on similar tasks, not formal education, is what employers look at when hiring. And these two zones of innovation, continuous learning flows and dynamic reputations, really lay the groundwork for the final zone of innovation I'm going to talk about today, algorithmic matchmaking. So today, algorithms frequently take on the role of matchmaker. They find us taxis, they recommend movies and books based on our previous viewing and reading patterns, and even connect us to potential love interests. They do this by sorting through our digital data trails to discover individuals, institutions, and opportunities that match our unique profiles. Now, over the next decade, these kinds of algorithms will change how we learn, how we work, go about our day, and even get what we want. The tasks we perform for pay may be assigned by matching algorithms that track our past task performance, our reputations, our social networks, and even our learning styles. One of the companies leading the way in this area is Knack. Knack is a company that uses games to assess a player's skills. While a lot of being good at a job has to do with technical skills, as you all well know, a lot has to do with personalities and things that are a lot harder to measure on tests and to tell from a resume. Knack has created mobile games that can assess what a lot of people refer to as soft skills. Things like critical thinking, persistence, anticipating emotions, problem solving, and risk taking. The idea is that you play the game and based on your activity in the gaming platform, they can tell you what you're good at. But that's only the first part. Knack has also been working with companies to create profiles of traits that they're looking for in candidates for a certain position. So when someone plays one of the Knack games and gets high marks in the areas that that company is looking for, it automatically sends the person's profile to that company. So they take the dynamic reputations built from continuous learning flows and they use them to make hyper smart and informed algorithmic matches. Now moving forward, there's one technology in particular we'd like to turn your attention to. Something that could help facilitate these complex processes, blockchain. And for that, I'm gonna turn things over to our resident blockchain expert, Alessandra Voto. Now, although it's a relatively recent innovation, blockchain technology is already demonstrating exciting properties that can help to make these certifications portable, useful, and trustworthy across educational institutions, companies, and even national borders. Blockchains are basically databases that hold records in chronological order, one after the other. There are many of these blockchains, each with their own data structures and rules. But what's unique about blockchains is that they distribute and synchronize these chronological records across a wide network of personally owned computers, rather than housing them in a centrally controlled data center like a university. All records and data are locked in place using a form of math called cryptography. This means once they're entered, they cannot be altered by any of the participants on the network. This is more than just an IT structure. It's a radical statement about who has the ability to add, view, and verify records that we all depend on. We can use these decentralized databases to track ownership of digital goods as they move from one person to another, like a traditional accounting ledger. And this is how blockchains were used for tracking payments of a virtual currency called Bitcoin. 
But blockchain applications aren't just limited to currency. Blockchains can log any kind of data, including text and documents, and tie them to specific accounts. This could include a teacher or employer writing a plain text record recognizing one of their students' everyday achievements, like learning a song on guitar. Now you may wonder how we would know who the teacher or learner is in these kinds of systems. How could we identify them and know to trust them? This all comes down to a new vision of identity. Now at the moment, online badges are tracked by specific universities and companies on their own servers, and they're tied to formal identity. They're subject to manipulation or deletion, leaving people without their hard-earned badges and leaving employers without absolute trust in who actually issued the token. But by contrast, blockchain systems don't necessarily require government-issued formal identity to prove these identities. Instead, they can give each new participant a unique set of letters and numbers, a pseudonymous identity that their virtual assets are tied to. This allows users to only share personal information with those that they trust. And it also means they can hold and prove their digital records anywhere in the world, regardless of their citizenship status. So what if we could use these user-owned accounts to store digital learning badges? What benefits would this kind of system offer us? Blockchains can solve for long-term storage of certifications, keeping them tamper-proof and synchronized worldwide. Having something in a permanent chronological record means that this type of stuff won't go away if the awarding institution folds. The second is smaller units of learning tracked. These systems can store additional metadata and files, giving us a more granular view of how a learner or worker performs. With these types of digital badges, you can show your work, meaning you could store a final project or hours logged alongside your micro-credential. And all of this data then ends up to a robust learner profile managed by the learners themselves. This is the dynamic reputation we talked about before. And finally, blockchains could offer secure sharing of information from these profiles. If the system is set up right, a learner would be able to place controls and permission rules on each piece of data held within the profile. Even if everyone has a record, only those with permissions could view it. You could allow one person to see your credential in political uprisings, but perhaps not everyone. And what might a robust learning ecosystem based on this blockchain even look like? Earlier this year at IFTF, we created a scenario. We built out on this idea of using the blockchain to track all learning experiences. We created it for an online game that uses IFTF's Foresight Engine platform, a massively open online gaming platform that we use to engage hundreds or thousands of people at a time in thinking about a particular future scenario. We imagine a new system called the Ledger a system that tracks every hour of your learning. We imagined a world 10 years from now when 1 billion people around the world were on the system. So what exactly is the ledger and how does it work? The ledger tracks everything you've learned in units called edgy blocks. Each edgy block represents one hour of learning or a unit of knowledge in a particular subject that's been certified. And anyone can grant edgy blocks to anyone else. You can earn edgy blocks from a formal institution like a school or your workplace, but you can also earn them from individuals in formal groups, maybe a community center, an online game, or an app. And employers can actually use your ledger profile to match you with a job or a gig that fits your skills, sort of like Knack is doing now. And one of the most distinguishing features of the ledger is that it keeps track of all the income that your skills and edublocks generate, and it uses that data as feedback on your courses. So when choosing what to study, you might want to pick an edublock with a proven track record of high earning students. And finally, given the smart contract features provided by the blockchain core of this system, you can use the ledger to find investors in your education. Since the ledger is already tracking income earned from each edublock, you can actually offer investors a percentage of your future income in exchange for free learning hours. Now, where could this have the most impact? 
This could be transformative for refugees and our increasingly migratory planet. As people leave the places where they're from, either by being forced from there or leaving by choice, the possibility to have and carry with you your entire educational history uncorrupted and with the metadata to back it up could be revolutionary. And systems like this might bring in parts of the virtual world as well. We may come to track learning moments on collaborative games like World of Warcraft. Each movement and interaction with other characters can become a crucial data point for judging commitment to teamwork, problem solving, and digital proficiency. As with all scenarios that we put together at IFTF, it's important to keep in mind that we didn't create this as a suggestion about what the system should be like, how it should be created. We created this scenario to be intentionally provocative, to get your juices flowing. We wanna get you excited or really angry. There might be something in this scenario that you think is inherently wrong and we shouldn't link our learning to money as a marker of value as opposed to enjoyment or personal fulfillment. We want to get you thinking. And that's really what we hope we did here today. What would you do with a system like Ledger? And how might you apply it to your organization? If you're curious to see the scenario video or to check out the conversation, you can visit learningisearning2026.org. And to see more of our learning or our blockchain research, you can find links to those um, on, up on the slide right now. And of course, always feel free to reach out to us with any questions or follow-ups. Thank you so much.